Hello and welcome to a little underwater grading tutorial in Adobe Premiere. Um, this time in English. A couple of people asked me if I can do it in English again. So here we go. Uh, let's jump right into Adobe Premiere. First thing, um, you import your footage. I already have four clips here. Um, all shot in Bonaire or Bonaire. Uh, last year with my Sony a7S III um, in S-Log3, uh, 4K 60fps, uh, 422 10-bit. Um, settings for S-Log3 was uh, color mode was S-Gamut 3 Cine and details minus 7. But I think these are the standard settings for S-Log3 in the Sony cameras or at least in the A7S III, I think it's picture profile eight or nine. Um, so first thing I do, because uh, that's all 60 FPS, um, I select all the clips uh, and I go to adjust and I change the frame rate to 23.976 frames. That way I get a nice slow motion. Then I drag the clips onto the timeline I mute the audio layer here now. So if I play it back, it's already slow motion. So next thing I do is I make a new object, an adjustment layer. It should have uh, the right settings like the sequence. So it's 4K at 23.976 FPS. I drag the adjustment layer on top of all the clips. Then I change into Lumetri color. And here I have on the left side the Lumetri scopes. If you don't see them, uh, you have to go to window and toggle on Lumetri scopes. So I have here my waveform, it shows the luminance of the clip. I have here my RGB parade. Um, so the red, the green and the blue channel and the luminance values in it. And I have my vector scope, which shows all colors in the clip and the saturation. So first thing I do, because this is all s log 3 it's a really flat profile, as you can see. Um, I change it to Rec 709 color space. Um, I use a lot for that. So I uh, go on to, into the adjustment layer because I want to have this on all clips and I choose my LUT. Um, I'm using here a Ari Phantom LUT. Uh, it's called Neutral. I think that's the right one. Yeah, this one. So now you can already see that the clips look much different. You can toggle it on and off. Next thing I do is uh, I change the intensity a little bit, around I think 90 should be good. And then I sharpen the image, usually around 30 because I have the details uh, in the picture profile set to minus seven. Um, next thing I do, I go into curves and then down here to luminance versus saturation. I make two dots here. These are the blacks and these are the whites. And I pull them down so I don't have any color information in the whites or in the blacks. Doesn't make a huge different, but difference, but I usually always do it. So, and then next thing, basic corrections. Um, here you have your waveform. Uh, on top at 100 you have your whites and on the bottom at zero you have your blacks. In between you have your shadows and here you have your highlights. So if something is below zero, uh, the blacks are clipped. Uh, same for the whites, if they touch 100 or if they go above 100, then they are clipped. So first thing I do, I make an S-curve. I pull down 
oh, sorry, I'm on the adjustment layer. I go in the clip because I want to do this now for every clip separately. I make an S curve. So you can see here the red channel is around zero. Then I go into basic corrections and I pull down the shadows a little bit more. I go up with the whites. The shadows a little bit up. Highlights a little bit a little bit up, maybe some more contrast. A little bit more saturation. So this looks good. Next thing I do because I don't like the color of the blue. I go here and add another Lumetri color effect. I go into HSL secondary and here you have your color pickers. So you can select a color, the blue in the background and here you have your mask. You can toggle it on off where you can see your selection. And with this plus you can add something to your selection or with the minus you can deselect it or you can change the values here. This is hue, saturation and luminance. So I want to try to get all the blues in the background. This looks pretty good. So next thing you do is you soften the selection, otherwise you get pretty bad bendings here on the edges. Looks good. So below here you can change now the colors, um, saturation, temperature, contrast only for the selection you made before. So this looks really, I don't know, a little bit aquamarine. So I can pull it towards blue. Maybe a little bit darker. Yeah, that looks better. Here the colors are still a little bit off. You see here on the side they are much different. So I make another Lumetri color effect. I only pick the color here in the middle. That looks good. Soften the edges. And I pull it a little bit more to the blues. This is now really quick and dirty, um, but I hope you get an idea. Um, white balance looks good here. I always use a manual white balance uh, with a gray card, so I don't really need to change this. So next clip here from my girlfriend. Um, it's a little bit dark, so I make a curve again. I pull up the shadows, the highlights, that way you get nice contrast in the picture. So then I go into basic corrections, could check if the white balance is okay, you take your color picker, ah, it's not really better, maybe a little bit more like this. Not a big fan of a perfect white balance underwater. Sometimes it looks a little bit strange. So next thing again, shadows a little bit down, the whites up. So this is always personal preference. You just need to watch out that nothing is clipping here. 
you can see that here on top, um, I don't know what it is, maybe uh, could be the bubble here, that this is pretty close to 100 and here should be a wetsuit. It's almost touching zero. This looks good to me. Maybe a little bit more saturation. So another thing you can do um, for skin tones is you go into effects and you draw a mask on the face. So and here um, on the vector scope you have this line and skin tones should always be on this line as you can see here because we always only have selected uh, her skin tone um, it's a little bit on the yellow side so on the yellow and green side so we can make a lumetri effect we go into curves and then down to color versus color I think it's called then we take the color picker and he, or he made the selection for us and if I drag this point now a little bit more towards the red then you can see on the vector scope that the colors are shifting so like this they are perfectly on the skin tone line I would leave it like this, go back into effects and delete your mask. If I toggle this one on off, it's a very subtle change, but your skin looks pretty yellow, a little bit greenish. Maybe we can a little bit more. Yeah, that looks better. So I think the blues are look are looking good. Um, yeah, that's okay. So next clip here, um, we start with a curve again. It's a little bit too dark, so I don't pull the shadows down too much. Go into basic corrections, maybe a little bit brighter, some more contrast, then the blacks down a little bit, whites up, shadows maybe a little bit down, highlights a little bit up, some more saturation, this already looks good. White balance looks good as well. Um, next thing I do again is Lumetri color effect, HSL secondary, um, because the blue here looks a little bit off. I try to target the blue here on the outside. Doesn't get any better. Oh yeah, here we go. Saturation. Yeah, like that. Soften the mask. And then we can pull it a little bit more towards green because it was really blue. Maybe desaturate it a little bit. That looks better. I mean, you could do anything because it's 10 bit footage you can change like this brown towards green if you like uh, you have a lot of latitude in 10 bit footage so um, if you do too much to 8 bit footage you get pretty strange bandings here especially in the blues um, 
maybe you don't see it in Adobe Premiere, but after you upload it uh, to um, YouTube or a different platform, um, it can fall apart pretty quickly. So you have to make really small changes. Um, this looks good. So another clip here, a macro shot. This frame looks good. First thing first, S-curve again. This looks good. Basic correction. Blacks down. It's always the same. Whites a little bit up. Shadows a little bit down. A little bit more contrast. Maybe saturation. I think the white balance was okay. Yeah, maybe like this looks better. So uh, you could do HSL secondary here again, if you want to change the color of the yellow, you just take your color picker, make your selection, can make it more yellow or green if you like. Just don't overdo it. I would leave it like that. Maybe make it a little bit more darker and some more saturation, a little bit more contrast. That looks good. So yeah, that's it. Uh, really quick and dirty color correction in Adobe Premiere. Um, I hope it was helpful. I will render the files out so you can have a f look in full resolution. Um, yeah, maybe see you again the next time. Bye.